What's up, fellow primates? So today we're talking about going beyond failure, into the great beyond. So we're going to talk about partial reps, isometrics, cheat reps, eccentrics, a bunch of different stuff about how to safely and effectively trigger more muscle growth by going beyond failure. So first, let's talk about exercise selection. I think it's important to choose isolation movements. You can do this on compound movements, but I think it is most effective for isolation movements where you're just targeting one specific muscle and you're gonna get far more out of it if you're doing this on isolation movements. If you're doing a squat or a deadlift or a lunge or a bent over row, where it's a little bit more of a risky movement, there is absolutely no need to do slow eccentrics, drop sets, and stuff like that. If you're doing a squat, just do the squat. Do it hard, do it well, go close to failure, but there's really no need to go beyond failure. If you're doing drop sets of squats, I would say that's not really necessary and is you know a little bit crazy to the point where the risk-reward ratio, probably not worth it. I also think it's good to choose exercises that have a strength curve where the top end of the range of motion is going to be the most difficult. So if you look here at a lateral raise, I'm going to first go to failure, and the hardest part of a lateral raise is at the top. There is no resistance at the bottom, and there is an increasing amount of difficulty as the range of motion goes up, as the arm goes up. So as you can see, it gets harder and harder to fully lift my arms. When I can no longer do failure, as you can see here, I'm gonna start doing partials in the middle or bottom middle part of the range of motion. I'm still trying to lift the weight as high as possible, I'm just failing. I'm essentially failing every single rep. And what happens for me, one of my central nervous system starts to freak out, my legs just go nuts. If I'm doing a bench press or if I'm doing uh, anything to failure like this, my my feet just start tapping that's just how i react to it it's not something i'm controlling it's just what happens when i'm pushing really hard and the weight isn't moving so i'm doing some cheat reps here and then i'm going to be doing a little bit more isometrics and partials just trying to hold it and push as hard as i can against the resistance this is really absolutely amazing for machines. I would say if you're not going to failure on most machines, you're probably not gonna be getting that much out of it. They are inherently much safer, and so you might as well go to failure and beyond. It especially is good if the machine has a strength curve where it is most difficult in the contracted position. So for a seated hamstring curl, it is most difficult in this contracted position. The straight leg position is actually very, very easy. So what I'm trying to do each rep is contract the hamstrings at that peak contraction part of the range of motion. And as the set continues, as fatigue develops, as I get to be incredibly tired and the muscle fills with lactic acid, hydrogen ions, that full range of motion no longer becomes possible. At that moment, Failure has been achieved. However, the set in my eyes is not done. And as you can see here, I am still attempting to get full range of motion. Every single rep, I'm not trying to do a partial range of motion. I'm trying to get that pad back down to my butt. But I'm just failing because of fatigue. How this works is it actually recruits more muscle fibers. It recruits the high-end motor units that are the biggest potential growers. So if you wanna grow a lot of big-ass muscle, you need to recruit those high-end motor units. And doing drop sets, going beyond failure, is a great way to do that. And what is really key is the effort. So the first bunch of reps, maybe the first 15 reps out of a 20 rep set, you're not really getting very much out of that because the body is not recruiting these higher end motor units simply because it is lazy. Your body is lazy. My body is lazy. It is looking to expend the least amount of energy, especially with these high end motor units. It's kind of like your wedding ring. Let's say you run out of money, you're going broke and you gotta sell some of your stuff to pay your debts. Well, you're gonna sell some other stuff. You're gonna sell just some furniture you don't need, you're gonna sell a computer you don't use anymore, but when stuff gets really bad, when you're desperate, 
you're going to sell your wedding ring. But you're not going to sell it first, right? Because it's more valuable. It's the same thing with these higher end motor units. Your body isn't just going to throw them away and use them when it doesn't need them. It's only going to use them when it really, really, really needs to. So with these pushdowns, I'm going to failure or one rep before failure, then I'm doing some partial reps in the bottom part of the range of motion. Then it's slowly going to go higher and higher, but this is not based on what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get to the bottom and I'm fighting it the entire way. And that is what actually triggers hypertrophy. It is the effort, it is, it is the intention, it is the willpower, the drive to fight that weight. And you can see the recruitment patterns in this really cool chart. You can see the MU1, uh, MU20, and then 40, 60, 80, 100, and 120. So the lower threshold motor units are recruited first, and then the 100 and the 120, these are going to be the fast twitch, higher end motor units, which have much more hypertrophy potential. These are only going to be recruited later when the other ones are fatigued. So after your slow twitch muscle fibers are fatigued, you start to recruit these better and bigger muscle fibers, because if you don't, you'll die. Okay, so that's what you have to do. You have to put yourself in this fight or flight situation, this grow or die situation where you're going beyond failure. As you can see here, I'm actually cheating. So I'm kind of rowing the weight back and then shoving it forward and going beyond failure because there's no way to get in that position just using the bicep. So that's another form of cheat rep that is very, very safe and effective. Ultimately, for these easier exercises that are much safer, in order for them to be fully effective, you're going to need to go beyond failure. So whether this is rest pause, where you go to failure, rest, and then go to failure again and rest and go again, or whether it is a slow eccentric where you cheat the weight up and you slowly lower it as slowly as possible, whether it's an isometric and you're just holding the weight at a certain point beyond failure, you've already gone to failure, you can't lift the weight and you're just holding it there and trying not to poop yourself. It could be a drop set where you go to failure with a certain weight, you drop the weight and then you go to failure again. It could be a lot of different ways. There are so many. My book has a bunch. If you want to check it out, it's on Amazon. Link is in the description. It's $8, has 4.9 stars. And yes, it is awesome. So let me know, do you train beyond failure? Which exercises do you train beyond failure on? And what is your favorite way to train beyond failure? All right, that is all for this video. Make sure to like the video. It does help a surprising amount, probably. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. Failure, we're halfway there. Take my hand, oh wait, it's holding a barbell. Wow, living on a prayer. Okay, enough of that.